the PlayStation 2, the world's best-selling video game system, treasured by gamers worldwide, the why. Let's take a look at Sony's PlayStation 2. What's up YouTube, Linux fan man here. So today we're gonna to take a look at the PlayStation 2 video game console, which was the best selling video game console ever. It sold over 155 million units. And to kind of put that into perspective, all of the other game consoles from that generation, if you put them all together, still wouldn't outsell the PlayStation 2. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But what I have in store for us today, we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at what's inside the PlayStation what made it so popular, and then we're gonna boot a original PlayStation 2, and then we're gonna boot a hacked PlayStation 2 to kind of show what other capabilities it has other than what people knew as it just being a gaming machine and a DVD player. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, guys. Here's an example of a PlayStation 2 motherboard. Now, as you guys can see here, um, it has a GPU, a CPU, and an input-output processor. And we'll be going over these chips here later on. But uh, basically, all the motherboards on the PlayStation 2 kind of look like this up until the very last revision. This motherboard here took the GPU, the CPU, and the RAM and put them all on one chip. So it's basically a PlayStation 2 on a chip. But let's go ahead and take a look at all the individual chips here. So the first chip that we're going to talk about is Sony's Emotion Engine, which is basically the CPU of the PlayStation 2. Now it ran at 294 megahertz, while later versions uh, with that PlayStation on chip I was talking about actually ran at 299 megahertz. So it was a little bit faster than the old fat or the uh, older slim models. Um, it also had um, eight different units within the Emotion Engine. So you had the CPU, you had two vector processing units, a 10-channel DMA controller, a MMU, which is a memory management unit, an imaging processing unit, and three interfaces uh, going to different parts of the system. So one for I.O., one for a graphics interface, and one to interface with the system memory. So the next chip we're going to look at is the graphics synthesizer. So this is basically the GPU for the PlayStation 2. It's a parallel rendering processor running at 147 megahertz, has a video resolution at the low end of 256 by 224 and at the high end of 1920 by 1080. Uh, it has 4 megabytes of embedded RAM or it can use up to the 32 megabytes of system RAM if needed. It also has a sprite drawing rate at 18 million per second. Now put that in perspective to what like the Atari or the uh, Commodore 64 was drawing sprites at. Just, it's a ridiculous number, but you know, it's a way newer game system. Uh, it also has a polygon drawing rate of 70, up to 75 million per second. So the next chip we're going to look at is the input output processor. Um, what this does is it connects the rest of the PlayStation to, say, the sound processing unit or the SPU or the DVD, CD controller, that type of thing. So it controls those things. Um, it also has two megabytes of embedded RAM inside of it. But the kicker is that also embedded on the chip is the original CPU for the PS1 running at 33.8 megahertz. So it can make your PlayStation 2 be able to run PlayStation 1 games, so backwards compatibility basically. So the very last chip we're going to talk about here is the CPU chip that's used in the newer Slims. Uh, I think the 7900 and the 9000 models had this basically a PS2 on a chip. So it combined the Emotion Engine, the graphics synthesizer, and also put the system RAM all on one chip. 
Last but not least, I wanted to bring up this diagram. Now, this is the architecture for the PlayStation 2 and how it runs. It shows how basically the emotion engine talks with the input output, talks with the SPU, talks with everything else that's on the board to make the PlayStation 2 the PlayStation 2. So kind of take a look at this and it'll give you a good representation on what everything is doing within the system itself. <laughs> So what made the PS2 such a great video game system? Why did everybody want to have one? Well, it was the year 2000 when it released, October of 2000. The Dreamcast had been out for a little while, and it had established itself as a pretty good game system. However, a lot of people like myself um, waited to buy the PS2 because we knew that it had a DVD player in it as well. And DVD players at the time, this is the year 2000, DVD had just been out for three years and that's it. So a good DVD player still costs, you know, three, four hundred dollars. Um, and when the PlayStation launched for its price, it was just like, wow, okay, so I get a top of the line next gen video game system and a DVD player. I know people to this day that still use their PS2 as their DVD player. <laughs> so that's pretty much why it became so popular. And as other game consoles were released, you know, like the Nintendo GameCube and the Xbox later on, people had already established a library with the PS2. So they didn't jump in on another video game console. So I think that's why the PS2 succeeded, where Everybody else tried to follow in their footsteps at that point. I did put it out on a few Facebook groups, uh, retro gaming and retro computer groups. What was their favorite video game console or computer uh, from back in the day? And the PlayStation 2 is definitely the console or computer that basically won out on every one of the groups that I had put that survey out on. Um, the Atari 2600, though, did come in second, so that's my pick. <laughs> Alright guys, let's go ahead and take a look. Ballers! Drive by! Incoming! Oh, motherfucker! My car! We gotta get back to the hood, man. It's too crazy around here. Grab a bike and pedal. Either you ain't forgotten that. Follow my lead. So here's the PlayStation 2 externally. So it's actually got a pretty cool design. I've always kind of liked the design of it and how it has these like fins, kind of like the Atari 2600 has. So that was always kind of cool to me. Uh, so you got the uh, disk drive here, power button, jack button. You put your memory cards up in here and then your controllers here. Okay, and then you got the USB ports right here, two of them. That's only USB 1.0. But it comes in handy dandy when you're trying to hack the system. Also, back here I got the modem with the hard drive put inside. I don't know what size hard drive this is. Um, I'll get into that when we uh, do the game hack thing later on. Uh, but then you got your network connections here. Power button. The, main, the mains power button, basically. That's where your power cable connects. And then you have your audio video right here. And then also you have your digital optical out as well. So pretty cool system all in all. Now I do have a PS2 Slim here too, guys. So here's a PS2 Slim. This one hasn't been cleaned up. This was in a box with that collection I got. So it's, <laughs> it's really dirty. But it's basically kind of the same, just a smaller version. And... It is a top loader, so it pops open instead of the disc tray coming out. So there you go, guys. So we have it all hooked up here. I even put the little slim next to it. It's not hooked up, but I put it next to it there. Um, so let's go ahead and boot her up and see what she does here. Yeah, 
yep, that's about it. <laughs> I don't have no memory cards or anything else in here. Uh, but I can uh, load up a game for you guys here. So we'll put, uh, what I got here? Ace Combat. Now, a lot of PlayStation 2s had problem with disc read errors. Um, the laser would get out of adjustment. The voltages would actually change just from it bouncing around inside of the, the system. Um, you can adjust the lasers, um, but it comes to a point where eventually you can't put any more voltage to the laser. It just burns out. So then you have to replace the laser unit. All right, so no memory card in there. So that's about that. So let's go ahead and load up a hacked PS2. All right, guys, so I'm going to boot up this hacked PlayStation 2 here. But wait a minute, isn't that the same PlayStation? Yeah, it is. <laughs> All you need is a hacked memory card. So this has what's called free McBoot on it. And um, we'll go ahead and pop this in, and I'll show you how it loads up with the hack. Might help if I put it in the right way. Alright, there you go, it's booted up now. You can see it pops up free McBoot. Alright, so now we have a little bit more options here in the browser. So in the browser you can put different like you can put emulators in here, you can do a whole bunch of different things. Um you can put you know a title at the top like I said Bill's fat PS2 so but let me grab a controller here all right guys so I got a controller here so if we scroll down we got the browser and the system configuration like you always do but then we have hack configurator this is where you can uh, go in and change different things on the hack uh, you can add emulators and other things on this I don't have any emulators because honestly guys I have all this I don't need an emulator on the ps2 so let's go ahead and go to games and what this does is it opens up a program called open ps2 loader and this works with the hard drive to basically boot games off of the hard drive itself so really cool here that hard drive don't sound like it's in too good a shape inside of there though it's clicking and ticking and popping <laughs> All right, so these are the games that I got on here. So there's a ton of games on here, guys. So I got that Ace Combat that I just put in there uh, on here. And basically, just a shit ton of other games. Um, so I just kind of wanted to briefly show you guys what a hacked PS2 kind of looks like. Um, it's pretty awesome. I like it. Uh, let me try to find a game here. Here's Max Payne. Let's try loading that. Show you guys how it works. Just hit the button. It goes to this weird like loading screen like an old Commodore 64. And there you go. And it loads up the game for you. You can save it to the memory card. Save it to... You can actually set it up to save uh, files to the hard drive as well. For your saves. But anyway guys, that's a hack PS2 right there. sums it up for this video. Um, the PlayStation 2 is an excellent video game system. I highly recommend it. Um, definitely easy to hack. Um, free McBoot. Um, open PS2 loaders out there. Just take a look. You guys can figure it out. Google it. I'm not going to show it on the channel. I'm not trying to get Sony on my ass. <laughs> but anyway, you guys have good one and please like and subscribe if you like my content see you peace out